before we get started with another show here tonight on uh, for Fast Break on Ice Sports Radio, I want to introduce you to one, one of our sponsors here. The Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. The world of uh, semi-pro sports uh, is unlike any other uh, sports organizations. Players pay to play, pay to play, then host uh, so many different outcomes, where it's pay, playing to get filmed to try for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just, play, just playing the same shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on the quest of their titles to give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give some of our pro sports a chance. If you love your sport, you may get the, that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. You can find them on social media at Twitter at SoCal Warriors, and on Instagram at Southern California Warriors, and on Facebook, Southern California Warriors. Now, on to the show. Can the Nets bounce back in the series with Kyrie going down earlier this afternoon? Can the Sixers continue their wave of momentum ever since uh, the game one loss against the Hawks? And can the Suns finish off the Nuggets in a sweep with Nikolai Jokic uh, receiving the MVP reward? We'll discuss that and much more on Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Lots to discuss, lots to talk about. You know, so we're going to hop on right, right on to it. Shout out to the chat. Y'all live and jumping right now. D-Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? Everything is pretty good, man. Um, very interesting game I seen earlier. Uh, we have a huge gap between this next game, which is just, just starting between the Nuggets and the Suns. But uh, a lot of stuff happened that first game. Yeah, a lot of stuff happened that first game. We'll, we'll go ahead and dive into it. What were your what were your thoughts coming out of this game tonight? I mean, this early this afternoon between the uh, Nets and Bucks. Well, my initial thought was that um, the Nets were going to get this game and close out in Brooklyn. Um, that's what I was expecting to happen because clearly the way they shot, what before this they you know shot they were coming back they didn't shoot that good the last game. And they had it pretty interesting, you know, in game three. So, um, for me, I was expecting Brooklyn to be like a totally different team um, today, which in a sense they kind of were looking pretty good. And then, you know, um, Kyrie goes down, and it's like now the attention is strictly on Kevin Durant. So, this is going to be very interesting to see how this plays out, like, big time. Like, this is going to be something that – is going to grab a lot of attention. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens uh, for game or game five. Yeah, I think watching the game, I, I don't know what we'll discuss between the role players and the star players, but it seemed like they, they their play was kind of neutered. In a sense, it's like you know we didn't see that production like we've been seeing for the past couple games with them. 
I think, you know, wherever happened with Bruce Brown, that last game, you know, him. And, you know, and for Bruce Brown, you know, if you got open layup like that, anybody will take that opportunity to go up like that. And we know, you know, if you watch, watch enough next basketball, that's, you know, where he get his shots at. Those 10 footers right there, those floaters. So I can't, you can't really fault a guy taking a shot like that. Whether, you know, wide open for a layup. Yeah, I mean, that's what he, that's how he makes his money in a sense. Outside of being a hustler, being a great defender that he is. So, I mean, he got a lot of, you know, thoughts about it, but. At the end of the day, they didn't shoot that good either. They still mm-hmm. almost won that game, game three. So that's why I was expecting this past game to be very interesting to see what uh, they were going to do. Now, they did bring up – Milwaukee did bring up that energy, uh, and they brought it. But the fall on Kyrie, when he rolled his ankle, it didn't look that good. I mean, for a person that walks around all day, it may not be bad. They can come back, you know, walk, do things like that, but – you know, he's a great ball handler, and he needs his feet, you know, as most ball players do. So, not sure how long he's going to be out, man. It's going to be something very interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, just look at the stat line, you know, for the Nets first. Like I said, like Brown, seven points, 21 minutes to play, two assists, really didn't bring nothing. Joe Harris, same thing. I was kind of like – Looking for him to kind of step up, but he was kind of like non-existent in most part. Blake Griffin looked good at times, but, you know, you kind of wish he, he did a little bit more. Mike James, you know, played pretty good. But, you know, it's just like they weren't getting contributions for anyway. Jeff Green, he was like scared to shoot for some reason. I figured with him being out so, so long that, you know, he'd be ready to, to chuck him. But Yeah, at this point, you would think that he would be more involved. Um, but again, I mean, it seemed like they kind of played kind of off a little bit. So it, it, we're going to see what happens, man. I mean, it's going to be very, you know, very interesting. Um, I told you right before we got back on the show, I was like, I ought to talk about, you know, KD being the best player in the NBA, well, it's going to come to see how true this is because now you're going to have people that are um, going to look at the fact that he doesn't have that many pieces. I mean, the first thing I thought about when I seen uh, Kyrie go down, I was thinking, even though it's not at the same exact thing, but I was thinking about the fact that uh, Kyrie went down against Golden State when he was with the Cavs. Mm-hmm. You know, and then left LeBron was out there to do his own thing. So, um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out because now KD has to do a lot more. A lot more is going to be on his shoulders. Um, you know, all the guys are going to have to step up. Joe Harris didn't do too much today either. No, and then, you know, uh, Terry brought up in the chat, you know, the Bucks pretty they, – they locked up KD pretty good this afternoon. They, they, were, they were on his ass tonight. You know, from the physical play, P.J. Tucker, you know, Giannis, Middleton, you know, Brooke Lopez, you know, when he drove, you know, KD drove the lane. So they were, they were on him, especially when Kyrie went out. That's when they turned the heat up on KD there a little bit. So, you know, I was impressed defensively by them. And then, you know, for P.J. Tucker... Hitting three point, hitting those three three pointers in the corner, thirteen points, seven rebounds. That's what you need from your starting power forward. Brook Lopez had a layer of rebounds. Giannis, thirty four twelve. So, you know your starters played great, and you know Forrest had ten points off the bench, so. You know, I think me and you we talked about this off the air. Like we're, you know, kind of worried if you know if Brooklyn's gonna beat these boys at the gym. Cause we saw that in Brooklyn, they beat them by double digits handily. So much so, like you mentioned, 
the the scrubs are getting time, good quality minutes in that series. Now you flipped on the other side. Now you got you know Brooklyn on the ropes a little bit. James Harden, we don't know we're gonna come back and play. You just got back Jeff Green. Now Kyrie's out, and then you know with his injury history, who knows how long he's gonna be out. Do you think Brooklyn can come back and win Game Five, or does has Milwaukee kind of turn the tide in this series? Uh, it's a tough question, man. I mean, man, if Kyrie don't play, to be honest, I don't think I don't think uh, Brooklyn has a chance to win this series. Um, I don't think Kyrie plays his next game. You know, but if he if he does, then they pop. Maybe they have a chance. But I think if he do play, he's not going to be one hundred percent. I'll say that because that role didn't look that good. You no, know, it really didn't. And we're talking about a game of what two days. So I'm um, in the sense right now. You're probably looking at him not playing, precautionary wise. But this next game is probably the most important game of the whole series. I mean, it's two two right now. So back is back at notch. You know, back back at zero zero, and you know, now it's a two game series. You know what I'm saying? Like you win the next two games. Um, if Milwaukee mess around and win this next game, they go back to Milwaukee. Yep. So uh, now you have a closeout opportunity. So uh, for me, and even in, and even if that now you're looking at needing Kyrie to be back healthy by game uh, game six at 100. percent And even if he is, it's still not a shoe in. Right, so, um, man, I ain't gonna lie. I think that I'll take Milwaukee Game Five. Um, I think without without Kyrie, too much too much on uh, KD's shoulders. Um, I don't know if the other guys can step up and play how they need to in order to take Game Game Five. And dude, they take Game Five. If Milwaukee wins in Brooklyn. You might want to uh, <laughs> book it to the next round for them. Yeah, it, it's. I hope see Nash and crew kind of you know find a way to get the other role player. If if Kyrie don't play, find a way to maximize your other role players. So you know be, that be Joe Harris Brown. You know, going guys to the bench like Mike James and um, Jeff Green, and maybe even, you know Tyler Johnson and Shamit. You between those court, those guys I just named out. You gotta find a way to get one of those guys hot and going next game. Because going back to the last game, Bruce Brown played pretty well until you know those couple possessions, but. Otherwise, he was playing pretty well. Find a way to get confidence back in him to, you know, contribute well for you. You know, so, you know, if they figure that out, you know, for that part, you're going back home. Maybe this guy will play better at home. If you somehow, if you're broken, squeak out a game five win, that'd be awesome. But, you know, we'll see if, you know, come game five, if Milwaukee can smell the blood and kind of take take advantage of this. Because I think we remind the people, there's been reports out there that Bootenhoser is kind of coaching for his job in this playoff mm-hmm. run. So, right. he, if if you're Bootenhoser, you got, you got to take advantage of this. I mean, I just, I don't, I'm just looking at, you know, what Brooklyn has and, you know, the situation that Milwaukee have. this is – now, I, honestly, if Kyrie is out the next game and they lose this series, I think Bootenhoser is gone. Mm-hmm. Like, for sure now. I mean, it, like, you're in a scenario now where you basically are going against, you know, basically one superstar. Now, we know what KD possesses understand but you have Chris Middleton and Giannis you know Andrew Holiday 
So you have some guys. Now it's just about um, getting it done now. Um, I guess the only disadvantage you have is you have one home game. So you're going to have to win one at Brooklyn either way, whether it's game five or game seven. So, you know, I would think this is a better time to take advantage of it is with Kyrie out. Now, we're going to see how they trickle this down because now the other guys, you know, Mike James is a solid piece, but I don't think he's a big-time scorer like that or a big, big play, you know, big play guy like that. Jeff Green can be Jeff Green. Blake Griffin, I guess you can say right now, is trying to wake up uh, uh-huh. if he can get his minutes. But, you know, right now, you know, it seems like Milwaukee has the advantage. It's back, like I said, it's back 0-0. Zero, zero. If we asked me this question when they were 2-0, that's a different case. Yeah. But it's 2-2 two, two now. So, you know, it, this is the opportunity that they have. So, they need to take advantage like like Phoenix is doing right now. Phoenix is up 19-10 with a 3-0, you know, lead. They're trying to sweep these boys out the gym. So, Milwaukee needs to be ready in two days. And because I'm almost positive that Kyrie – I mean, Kyrie could play in two days, but realistically, I mean, if he does play – I don't think we see the 100% Kyrie. So it, now you're going to mix Kyrie, which is now, in a sense, 100% KD. Um, and now we're going to see, you know, how great of a player KD is. These are the moments that we talk about with LeBron and with Jordan, you know, with all these other guys. This is the opportunity. And I'm pretty sure, you know, the lights will be on. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned Phoenix and Endeavor right now. Phoenix is up by 10 right now. They have been cooking during the playoffs. And what what are your thoughts on Phoenix, you know, in their their impressive run they have so far? I mean, to come in to Denver, put it on them, Joke is getting the MVP award. That still don't kind of it seems it seems it hasn't really motivated the Nuggets too much, but if Phoenix wins this series, and the way the Clippers and Utah Jazz series is going, can you see Phoenix possibly making a run to the finals? Um, they should definitely expect them to. I mean. We talked about it last year. Isn't it the same team that went on the run last year at the end of the uh, bubble? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and this was without Chris Paul. So, um, I like what this team is possessing right now. They got all the pieces. I mean, it's one thing you got to realize, too. You know, winning goes around. When, winning going around the same caliber players is something that needs to be noticed. Um, I have a track coach that everywhere he goes, no, no matter what school he goes to, Winning is happening. He goes to he started at FSU were winning. He goes to Georgia, they go win the title, and then he goes to uh, Tennessee, and they're in in the running for a title. Jay Crowder has literally been to the NBA Finals last year with Miami, and now he's in a sense putting Phoenix in a similar position. I say that to say that you know he's a key piece to that. Um, you know Shannon Sharp, same thing, both Baltimore and Denver. He was a key piece in winning titles for both teams. So, Jay Crowder's a, a valid piece right now, I believe. Um, and Chris Paul, same thing. I mean, OKC looked like a better team than they did this year. And he had them in the playoffs, and now he has the Suns looking very good. So, Monty Williams has a very good, very, very good, uh, you know, very, very good roster. It's hard to not get him to be coach of the year. Obviously, the Knicks have done was, like, the highlight of the NBA season making the playoffs and making the push like that. Um, but I like the Suns. The Suns are very deep, so um, expect a lot from them. Um, and you know, a lot of people have Brooklyn, you know, penciled in as the NBA, NBA champs, but they can't make it out of this round. Man, we might see something that, you know, we might see a title uh, go to a team that we weren't expecting at all. No. But then, you know, watching the game live, Jay Crowder uh, blocked Eric Gordon's shot. And then Devin Booker, you know, looking for the three-point play right now. So, I mean, 
you like you mentioned about that Jay Crowder making a defensive stop and then you go back on the other side and Devin Booker's got an opportunity for a three point play. So you know we'll continue. To, uh, we we, blah, blah, blah. we will continue to talk about this game live and you know see uh, how things go about. Uh, going to the chat real quick. Tarion uh, speaking about Jazz and Clippers. Uh, Colin Cowherd says, oh, Colin Cowherd. Colin Cowherd says the Clippers are winning the rest of the way and advancing to the Western Conference Final because Spider Mitchell isn't 100%. Do you agree with him? I don't agree with a lot of things that Colin Cowherd said. Especially, you know, the comment he said about Julio Jones. But, you know, that's another subject for another day. But what do you think about that, d Log? Can, can the Jazz win that series since Mitchell isn't completely healthy? Uh, no. I didn't have to win that series, even if he was healthy. Um, this is, this is, you would think all these injuries and stuff would happen in the bubble last year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? <Not> what's happening <laughs> the season after. Uh if they don't have Donovan Mitchell, it's over. Because Conley, we don't know how long Conley is going to be healthy. We don't know, you know, what game he's going to play. He's so iffy sometimes. Um, so, and we're not talking about, you know, a team that should not have made it play. We're talking about a team with Paul George and Kawhi. So, Donovan Mitchell doesn't play. You can go ahead and can play the can of Jazz. I mean, Mitchell, but, I mean, Last game, uh, going back to Saturday, you know, five for nine for three point land, eleven for twenty four from the field. You know, thirty points. You know, he didn't play bad. I just think, you know, you look at the other starters. Barbanovich, he just had he just had nine points. That ain't going to help things. Rose Neal shot the ball pretty well. So I mean, that you know, that's one plus. But, you know, the Clippers, you know, getting 34, 31 for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, respectively. Great job. You know, they went back to that small lineup, D-Lock, of Marcus Morris being that five-man. Yeah. And having Batum at that four. Because, then you know, that game two, they went to Zubak. And, you know, it was, it was real iffy. I'm surprised they haven't, you know... Start DeMarcus Cousins and see what you can get out of him starting. Get some motivation out of him. Because, you know, when I tweeted from the Fast Break account, and you not follow us on Twitter at Fast Break IESR, please do. I tweeted, you know, you put Cousins in the starting lineup, you, you get some size, but also. He's still able to stretch the floor, you know, for Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Yeah, you know, Morris can do that as well, but, you know, he's 6'9". And, you know, if you got to contend with Gobert, who's 7'3", you know, that's 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 uh, easy pickings right there for him. But, you know, put Boogie in there. See what you can get out of him, you know, for the Clips. And kind of, you know, put the pressure on them. Put your best players out there. You know, they're finally starting to play Luke Kennard a little bit more. They pay all that money. And they finally realize, oh, we, we got this other guy that can shoot and get some points off the bench. Terrence Mann, he's really come along very well. So, you know, for the Clips, D-Lock, I was like, okay, you came back home, you won that game. If you come back Monday, win this game with Kawhi Leonard playing very essentially well. Then for a Utah team, what do you do? And you better hope but the my thing is Utah is just Utah is just you no know, 
I'm not sure what they expect from Conley from day to day, you know, from game to game. Like, it's not consistent enough for me to, you know, hang my hat on. And, you know, the Clippers, like you said, you still got Boogie in the fold. Like, this is what I was trying to tell my, one of my friends, too. I'm like, man, Boogie ain't no chump. No. Uh, if he get the minutes, he gonna ball. Like, let's not forget who we talking about. <laughs> dude can get you, dude can get you 15 and 10 if he get the minutes. Like, I, I, I really believe that. Like, he is, he's one of the most athletic, like, centers in the league right now. It's just that, you know, him bouncing from place to place, you know, that right fit and getting the minutes is hurting him. But if he gets the minutes, he will be effective. So, you know, the Clippers have a pretty decent, pretty decent, you know, roster to put together to, to do some damage. And, again, the biggest thing about Gobert is he's a defender. He's not really a scorer like that. So, you know, Utah are put in a position where we need to see more about from Bogdanovich in a sense. Joe Ingles will have to make his shots on a consistent, which he don't do that much. But this is what you're going to have to see. Like, you're going to have to see that for Utah to have a chance, especially if Donovan Mitchell is, you know, not 100%. You know, clearly, Kawhi can turn into a monster at any point. Mm-hmm. So, it, like, you know, at this point, do you – now, even with pandemic P, you know, or Paul George playing inconsistent, it's like Utah don't look like the same team that we were talking about early in the season when they were the number one seed. Yeah. You know, for Conley, you know, you know, if he plays, you know, who, who are you going to stick him on, on defensively? I mean, I mean, yeah, you can have him guard Reggie uh, Jackson, but you know, Reggie Jackson's been playing pretty well since he's mm-hmm. been inserted to the starting lineup. Ah, man, for Utah, I don't know. It feel like that's what I'm saying. You know, who has been real kind of quiet for Utah in a sense. Jordan Clarkson. I mean, I'm not too much from like that. I mean, I know he played pretty well game two, but I just feel like it's it's not having that pop, you know, as expected. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you know, besides him and Derek Favors, who can really count on that bench for Utah? Uh, Cordy Jang. I mean, if he gets in. You know, maybe he can give you something, but he feel to me he's one of those players that play better at home than on the road. Like he gives that energy better at home than on the road. And that last that game three, he running around. They just if he ain't got the open look for a three pointer, they just flushing him. They run him out the three point line. And he he can't, he can't give you nothing else. Now they got every, and I, I, I forgot about this. They got Elliot Sogo on that bench. I was like, "Oh, they got him." Yep. Like another what? shooter. A shooter and guy can bang down low. Like, what y'all gonna throw him out there? Mm-hmm. But see, I think that this is maybe this is why I don't coach basketball because I don't know. But the rotation, the different things that they can do, uh, plays a huge part because who knows how much a rotation that Elias Sova's getting in during practice. You know, those little things, like, you know, that is what is going to, maybe that's the reason why some of these guys are not getting in, but they need to expand who gets in because Goldberg can be a liability on the offensive side, and we know that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you feel that way, put in Derek Favors. If you don't, you ain't feeling what Derek Favors bring to you, Try every so of them. I mean, he's damn. He's six eleven, seven foot. You know, put him in. See, see what you can get. In which, by the way, in today's NBA, I'm surprised they nobody told Gobert to kind of expand his offensive game. I, I I'm kind of surprised about that. But anyway, that's another subject for another day. 
But it seemed like, you know, the Clippers in the playoffs, d log is like they get to these slow starts game-wise. They go down 2-0. Then they come back. And then it seemed like after they come back, kind of wake up a little bit. That's when things kind of take over. Do you mm-hmm. foresee that happening on Monday? Winning game uh, four and then maybe trying to take over that series? Uh, I mean, what the game is? The game is in Utah? No, the game's in L.A. L.A.? Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't say sacrifice. I wouldn't want to say sacrifice this game. But if I'm Utah, you know, if Donovan Mitchell is not 100%, I'm not I'm not putting him out there. Um, the reason why I say that is because, for one, you're the number one seed, so you've got the game seven at home. Um, maybe you let Mike Conley do what he do and see if you can lean on that. But at this point, um, you know, you want to have some kind of um, – you want to have some kind of – you don't want nobody to be too much injured going back home. No. Because, yeah, I mean, I guess you can win in L.A. and then try to possibly close it in, uh, at home. But remember, we just seen the Clippers have a game, have a series where they basically won all the away games. And then after winning all the away games, they won at home. <laughs> so, in a sense um, – I think the Clip, the Clippers win this this next game. You know how important it is, in a sense, that the Clippers win lose one more game. It's probably they're probably done. Uh, but I expect this to be a tough one. Um, but like I said, me if I'm if I'm the coach, um, I'm probably looking at okay, how is Donovan feeling? Let's see where he is. If he's in a really good position, okay, he's he's close, damn near 100 percent. Okay, we give him a run. But if there's any doubt on his percentage, if he's pretty low, if he's not feeling that good, if he's a force, you know, if it's a game time decision, I sit him. Because right now you can you can you can't afford I guess you can't say you can't afford to lose a game, but your game one right now, you have the opportunity to I would rather be fully healthy going into game five than to be limping in game four. I mean limp, limping in game five. You do that you know, that game is going to be the most important regardless because if you win this game, you're going to have to close that game. If you lose this game, you're going to have to win that game to be up one. So game five is going to be the most important. So am I willing to sacrifice, you know, a percentage of like, somebody being injured during that game? Nah, not not the next one. But the Clippers are, they're clicking right now. And they have, you know, the injury, injury guys are in their favor, so... Uh, if it's me, um, I think the Clippers will win, but I think the Utah coach, uh, coaches need to, their coaching staff need to be smart on this one. Yeah. I think, you know, Chris, Arnold, he's a smart guy. I mean, he's been around for a while, so I think he'll figure some things out. I mean, you know, just keeping up with this uh, Phoenix and Denver game. Phoenix is up by seven right now. Kind of some sloppy, sloppy action right now, but you know, Phoenix is getting the ball back. So, like I said, we're going to keep an eye on this. Uh, it seems like um, Phoenix got a lineup of Chris Paul and Cameron Payne out there at the same time. Along with Dor- Dario Saric, Cam Johnson, and Torian Craig. Denver got JaVale McGee out there right now. So, like you mentioned, mentioned about coaching adjustments. McGee ain't really seen a lot of time in this playoff run. So, maybe Mike Malone's kind of looking... Like he said after, you know, his Game 3 comments and stuff, say like, you know, I'm going to throw guys out there and see what sticks. Yeah, I mean, at this point, um, you want to see what the combination, because remember with the Nuggets, the Nuggets, Nuggets, I mean, they, the Nuggets, they put up, who, uh, Monty Moore started and Will Barton. Will yep. Barton is starting to get, you know, he's starting to get kind of clicking right now, but He's not fully there. Um, so it was good for him to put him to start him and give him a chance. But they're trying to find their combination. We didn't see JaVale McGee that much. 
but this is the first time we're actually seeing them. And also, they know that they need Jokic down the fold, you know, later on down in this in this in this game. So uh, we'll see how that plan, how that works out. It's going to be very important to see how this this rolls. Um, but I, the Suns, man, they're probably man. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's just crazy the fact that we were just talking about this team not even a year ago. You know, we seen them go on that run late in the bubble. Talking about Devin Booker being the bubble MVP. And now look at him. One big piece in Chris Paul and and Jay Crowder and they're they're making big moves. Yeah, and then Cam Johnson just hit a three pointer. After Capanzo's, uh, you know, three-pointer shot. So, man, it's like the back and forth. The role players are hitting shots for Phoenix. You know, and, you know, they clicking on all cylinders right now. So, that 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 is, you know, if you're Phoenix, Monty Williams, you got to be feeling good right now. And with... Joke is on the bench right as as we speak. Who we should be getting in here soon? I mean, you, you're playing for your you're playing for safe off emulation. Uh, Put Jokies back out there. Let him get like 35 plus and see what happens. Yeah, I mean that's a big thing too. Is you know, right now get all those minutes and see what you can cook up. But it's a big game, man. <laughs> the Sun look like one of the bigger pieces right now that could make a big move. The Nets are starting to break down. So it's up in the air, man. And Phoenix playing so well, you know, their fans are in confidence, you know, saying they're going to sweep folks, too. Especially that video, I, you know, we I shared to you, I think, to, earlier today, that man beating up that dude in the crown saying Suns in four. I say, wow. The confidence from the players and coaches to the fans beating up folks in their other arenas. Yeah, then on top of it, the dude had the upper hand. Like, <laughs> bro, you, you, <laughs> you on a higher level. You, it, dude just throwing uppercuts at your man and then saying Suns in four after that. You see, I don't know. I think I told you. I said, you see how slick he tried to run away without his his face being on the video. So, yeah, man, it's gonna be what Phoenix. I know they're going crazy right now. Man, when I saw that dude had that that haircut, that hairstyle, it looked like something like from like damn near two thousand five. I said, I know he's gonna get his butt kicked. I thought I thought that look. I'm like, damn, dude. I ain't seen that hair, type of hair since 2005 in high school. You, you, you know, another thing I noticed too. Did you notice that we haven't seen Chris Paul get hurt all year long? No, no, nah. not really. We haven't heard anything like to where I mean the shoulder issue recently. But besides that, you know, usually some kind of injury we hear with Chris Paul, he's out for a lot, of, a, you know, some time. We haven't heard anything. So, something that, you know, is, is very huge. Because we see the difference right now, what's going on with them. And knock on wood, knock on wood, hopefully nothing strange happens to him. Because it's, it, it's like, I don't know what it is with Chris Paul, but come playoff time, something happens to him. And, you know, maybe this one of these years that, you know, he breaks that curse for himself. But y'all know it. Y'all go back to the years. You know, feel like the Clippers, those Clipper teams could have made a run to the finals. I know that Houston team, if he weren't out that game seven and they won't, you know, miss three point shots, they probably, they, Probably went to the NBA Finals if Paul was healthy. Yeah. I think that, 
You that's, could book that. I believe. Yeah. That's that what if factor right there. So maybe we see something different different now. So knock on wood. And hopefully, you know, nothing happens to him. Speaking of things, you know, not happening to players, D-Lock. Joel Embiid. Joel had that meniscus tear back in that first round matchup with the Wizards. You know, he missed that game, you know, four and five against the Wiz. And, you know, his status is up the air by playing, you know, that first game against the Hawks. He did. But, you know, they had like 38 points, but they lost by four. And they lost by four, even though they've been down, you know, pretty big in that series. And I said to myself, if you're, I said to myself, if you're Atlanta, yeah, you won the game, but you don't feel too confident going forward right now unless some things change. Well, d luck, Philly has turned this series upside down. They are up 2-1 right now. How confident are you in Philly to possibly, you know, to go 3-1 come Monday? Do you see that happening, or do Atlanta kind of regroup itself and kind of get the series tied back up? Uh, I don't lie. They can't do anything with Embiid. No. <laughs> until they do something, <laughs> until they do something with me, you know. I'm, hey, you, you, we play fan do it a lot, so I'm literally seeing every game that Joel and B is, is question, questionable. Knowing damn well he's playing, not only is he gonna play, he gonna play a low ownership, but he's gonna have like a triple double. So right now, um, it's kind of tough to see uh, Atlanta making the big difference. Um, for me, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to click when it comes to shooting, mm-hmm. big time. If they can't, you know, right now Capella has just been absent. He hasn't done anything for them. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be huge to see if uh, he can do something uh, that can make a big difference. But the thing is. It is in Atlanta, so they do have the opportunity. The fact that it's Atlanta, they have that chance. But man, I don't know. I mean, right now it's just it's just the fact that it's just the fact that <laughs> Embiid is clicking right now, and he's clicking very good. So we're gonna see uh, how that plays out. Do I see them beating them in Atlanta? I'll say this: I think this is the game that Ben Simmons has. Shooting wise or scoring wise, it's one of gonna be his better games. Um, I see, I see Philly going up three one. Yeah, after that game one loss, I mean, you know, they suffered. In a way, Embiid has played despite his injury. I I just don't like Atlanta's chances. I mean, we talking Embiid putting tw- up north of twenty five points. In this series, that's the scary thing on a on a little meniscus tear too. If he's putting up numbers like this against y'all, I don't know what to tell y'all. And the fact that he got confidence, confidence to drive the lane and stuff like that, that's. You know what Philly, you know, need to see his fan, the fans, and whatnot, the confidence of saying, okay, yeah, he's not healthy, but all the way. But if he's putting out this max effort, yeah, it's going to carry a long way. And then going back to that last game, besides MB playing pretty well, almost having a triple double, Tobias Harris shot the ball very well, had 22 points, you know. Young guns, you know, Milton and the uh, kid from Washington, I can't think of his name right now, had solid games off the bench. Um, Dwight Howard had 12 points, six rebounds in 13 minutes. You 
you know, looking at things in the Atlanta side, I know missing um, DeAndre Hunter has hurt what they want to do defensively. And especially, you know, I think I talked to you about this off the air. You know, he's slowly coming around, coming along offensively as a player and scorer. Like, he's showing some flashes that, okay, down the road, we talked about like maybe a top 25 player. I think he got the tools to be it. 6'8", 6'9", forward. I, I think he got the tools to be it. You mentioned Capella. Embiid as, and I'm surprised Capella is not put more pressure on Embiid to do, make him do more on his knees. And I was like, and especially that game one, Capella giving Embiid space and stuff like that. I was like, dude, you know, he can, he can shoot that J pretty well. Why are you not on him? Make him work. I just don't get it. I mean, it, it, it be the show why he is clearly an MVP, um, why he's an MVP, why, why he was an MVP candidate. Right now, he's just like, he's doing everything right now. So, it makes it very hard to, <laughs> dude, Capella looks like, <laughs> Capella looks like he does he doesn't want to be there. Like, he has, like, honestly, if you look at what Capella's doing, like, he's probably going back to the bench, like, well, what else do you want me to do? See him you, can't, <laughs> you can't do anything. So, at this point, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, like, what else do I? I'm, I'm trying to hardest, but we're talking about literally one of the best players in the league. So, um, but like you said, this this is getting the crowd going, um, and everything going for Philly. That's getting them very hyped right now. Uh, and hell, I, I mean, the, the, what happened today? Oh gosh, we mess around to see a, you know, a Philly and Milwaukee uh, Eastern Conference Finals. That's gonna be something to watch for, man. Yeah, and going to the chat, Terry brought up, you know, the Hawks are too inexperienced. Yeah, that, that could be a factor into that. You know, they got a lot of young guys on the roster, and the only real guy that got real experience like that is Lou Williams. Is Lou Williams, and maybe Capella, you won't throw him in there. But, you know, I also throw in Nate McMillan having that experience, so and he's been around the block for a while, so. Yeah, the, the players are inexperienced, but I, you got a head coach there that has been around for a very long time in the NBA. So, maybe they can shake things up, you know, for Philly, I mean, for Atlanta. I don't, I, if, they, if, they, if they figure out the NBA problem, Joel, I mean, D-Lock, if they can find a slow way to slow him down and make these other guys uh, work more, I think you can get back in this series. But the way he's been playing, I don't know they can really find an answer for him. Nah, he's playing out of his mind. I mean, again, we're talking about one of the better players in the NBA. And, you know, this me thing doesn't seem like it's a big issue. Uh, So, to me, I think that they win the next game. Um, what is it, game game four? Yep. After that, I think they go home from game five and they close it out in Philly. I, mean, I don't see them like at this point. You know, Trey Young had a hell of a game the first game. Uh, and they had a good run, but it's just the fact that they are a good defensive team. They're starting to trap Trey Young and slow down the other shooters. Um, one of our boys was telling me that you, you know, you cut the head off the snake and everybody else falls. And that's what's happening right now. They're slowing him down. They're not necessarily stopping him, but they're slowing him down. And now, this is what you see in the sense of, you know, Bogdanovich is a little inconsistent. We haven't seen too much of Gary Hughes the last game. So, 
um, and they cannot stop and be. If they be continues to eat like that, it's a wrap, man. Yeah, I think you know. I think I, I go on that way. I might go Atlanta. I think they may squeak out. It's gonna be a close game, but I think they might squeak it out. You know, I think Trey Young may come out and have a thirty-plus point game. I think you will see a little bit more for Kevin Herter as well. I think he contributes very well off the bench and gives it that little extra push. But give me Atlanta for game four win. But like you mentioned, if they don't win this game, then it's a wrap. You know, going with that Philly crowd. And then, you like Atlanta? I like Atlanta game four. I think Trey Young comes out, gives them about you know thirty plus points to lead them to a win, and Kevin Herter off the bench, at least give him twenty to put him over the hump. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have, I may. I'm, I may. I may try to go to that game. Um. So I was actually thinking about going to game three, but dude, the traffic is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> to get to the game, the game started at 7 30. Dude, you got to be parking at like five. So, so um, but I may try to, I may try to go to tomorrow's game and see how it, how it plays out. But uh, yeah, they could, but uh, I mean, we'll see. They mess around and slow down and be, and yeah, they have a chance. But, you know, how many teams can really do that? Mm, today's NBA, not not too many. Maybe two decades two decades two decades ago, I could you probably like throw a number of teams, but with the finesse that style style of everybody in NBA, not too many bigs that can really go out there and try to punk you, you know, match up with you, then you're not gonna see it. I mean, maybe maybe in Milwaukee, you know, just throw out uh, Mr. Uh, Bobby Portis and see you trying to punk him and see how that goes. Don't even bring him up because he pissed me off. Really. I had him in my lineup. <laughs> and he didn't do nothing to give me. <laughs> but give me two blocks early. The dude gave me two blocks in the first quarter, and then he just disappeared the rest of the game. He sure did. I'm like, damn. I was like, boot knows it needs to be. Hey, blue holes need to be uh, fired just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> How you gonna have my man going and get the two blocks, <laughs> and then you know where to be found? He ain't know where to be found like the rest of the game. Like, nah. Yeah, I'm... maybe because you know Lopez played so well. I don't know. You know, I guess you know Lopez showed enough toughness tonight that you know. He kept him out there. But, like I said, I mean, for Boogs, I'm like, hey, put all your chips on the table. Play your best players. You know, see how it goes. You know, y'all show guts and stuff tonight. You know, you know, uh, Pat uh, Coddington, you know, he got his eye busted open. And I thought, you know, something happened to him, but. You know, he bounced back, played strong on it. So, you know, who can contain Embiid? I don't. I would have said I would have said the Knicks, but you know, uh, what's his name was was has you know been out with some surgery, Mitchell Robinson. So you could throw throw those three headed guys like a Taj Gibson, Noah's Noel, and Mitchell Robinson. And continue him that way. You know. A potential finals matchup. Sixers and the Suns. You know. Besides Aiden. You know. Do you feel confident in Frank Kaminsky. Garden Joel Embiid. No. <laughs> no way in hell. Or Dario I mean, Sarge. Nah. I mean. I feel like MB is a person that you're not gonna like. Like we talked about before, you're probably not gonna stop him. So your best bet is to maintain him. But I would, I would like 
DeAndre Aiden against him just because, you know, you see DeAndre Aiden, he's not necessarily trying to grab every board off the glass, right? He's more so of a, a offensive player. Um, he's gonna do his thing. Jay Crowder's gonna come down and do, you know, be a defensive guy. Oh, but uh, you know, it it to me it seems as if um, Embiid is just gonna be Embiid, so that's fine. But now you have to um, do things around him, but slow him down. But possibly, I probably would come at him. Foul trouble is probably the best bet. So that's part of my idea to slow him down. And then speaking of slowing down, Phoenix is up right now. Um, 50-43. Uh, this had a fast break opportunity. Uh, Chris Paul to um, Miles Bridges for alley-oop. So Phoenix is up by, by seven. And they're perfect for the line right now, D-Lock. They're 11-11 from the, free, from the free throw line. So, you know, I think we talked about it in the past. You know, my, th- my thing about coaching and stuff like that, about free throws, if you ain't at least seventy percent in a game and the game close, you can look back in that stat line and say, "Okay, what happened? What, where did we go wrong?" Oh, we lost by five points. Oh, we missed by ten free throws. Well, that's a ball game right there. And, you know, Phoenix having his lead going eleven eleven from the line. That's great news for them. You know, if they stay atop. And then they come come back from the timeout. What what can you what the what could Denver do to try to win this game? I mean, we've seen Jokic down low against eight and one on one right now, and I mean, Aiton got another foul call on him. What can uh, Denver do to try to win this game tonight? In your eyes, the best option is. To- it, their best option is to get Will Barton started. Um, Jamal Murray is not there. Mar- Monty Morris and Will Barton need to get started. It seems like right now we're not going to hear too much from Michael Porter that much. That's usually their go-to guy. Um, since Will Barton has been out so long. But um, get Will Barton started. Get these guards started. Because clearly uh, Denver has um, – they're going to dominate down low. You know, Jermichael Green, Neil South, Joe Gajera going. They got the guy, Jamel McGee. They're going to dominate down low. They need to get uh, they need to get their guys started. And the biggest thing for me is uh, for Will Barton, they need they need scores on the outside because, like I said, Jermichael Green and Neil South, they'll get in, but they're not going to be uh, they could be a assist man. They could do these couple things. Right now, Phoenix, they're just letting Michael uh, Devin Booker do what he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, Chris Paul do what he wants. Cameron Payne is kind of coming there, kind of cooking. Cameron Johnson is doing doing damn near as much as Miles Bridges. So for me, uh, this really more so of the fact that they need to get their shooters going because if they can get their shooters going, they're keying in on Jokic. That makes sense. They're going to key on Jokic. Jokic is the guy on that team. So if they can get everybody else started, then they have an opportunity. But if not, we might as well go ahead and uh, take the broom out. You know, well, I don't know. You just seen a Michael Porter. He hit it like a, a mid range shot. Then, and then this company, and then next possession, Phoenix just came down. Chris Paul hit a mid range shot for himself. And then you talk about. Um, you know, what's his name? Martin Morris. You know, he hit a layup. I just think, you know, they got get get a few stops on these boys. And Devin Booker's trying to post up, and Morris got the foul call on him. And they get some stops, you know, for Denver. They get some stops and stuff like that. I think they'd be all right. But like you mentioned, De- they letting Devin Booker run around and get what he want. Chris Paul. Hell, you let, they posting up Devin Booker. Right now. So, yeah. you got to adjust to that. I mean, you can't. I mean, 
I know Devin Booker's about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, but still, you can't let him post you up like that. Or give him an isolation post up like that. Come on now. Mike Malone got to be smarter than that. Got to. If you're going to post up like that, hey, have a bigger man on him, like Barton or maybe uh, Michael Porter. Or hell, even Aaron Gordon. And Jokic with the three-point shot. And he got to be a little bit more aggressive, too. I mean, they're in a situation where they don't have much, man. I mean, Jamal Murray going down really hurt them. Um, the fact that they did break Air Gordon midseason or later on in the season, he's not kind of in the fold. I think he'll play, play a better part next year. But for me, it's just, you know, the Suns are also a team that's just loaded right now. Like, the Suns have everything they need right now. It's going to be hard for them to really get beat by anybody. Um, to be honest, I think that's the better team that matches up against the Nets. It's the Suns because they have the big man that can dominate if he really need to. Then they got the guards. You know what I'm saying? That can kind of somewhat slow down um, slow down Chris Paul and these guys. Uh, slow down, I'm sorry, not Chris Paul. Slow down Kyrie. You know, slow down these guys. So um, the Suns are set right now. I mean, like I said, we talked about it before. This team looks very seasoned and ready. And with the inconsistency of Utah, who can you really say right now is going to take a, a big push? I mean, the Clippers are, the Clippers could be the Clippers. They look very good, but I don't know if I like them really to have a better roster overall than Phoenix. And like you said, like we talked about earlier you know, on the show, like if they throw if they throw Boogie in, then they they throw some big problems. But how often do they play him? Not much. So that's going to be the big problem for me. Like, if you can get Boogie his minutes, Boogie can get his minutes. Oh, then okay, cool. But I honestly feel like that's going to be the matchup we're going to see. We're going to see the Suns against the Clippers. And if we see that, if Boogie plays a lot, then we might see some damage. But if he don't, man, they about to sweep. But they're well, they not going to sweep the Clippers. They're probably dropping the six. And that's if we don't see. That's if we don't see Boogie. Yeah, so and right on cue, you know, real Barton made a, a layup. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw that or not, but so they only down by four, and then, damn, that's ticky tack foul right there on B- B- Booker. That's ticky tack right there. That's a bad call. That's a real bad call. He asked me. God, that's a ticky tack call. But damn, Devin Booker's stat line right now, six for fourteen from the field, which you not bad. We wish you a little bit better, but makes the first free throw. So I know Denver's gonna I mean not Denver. Phoenix gonna try and make the push for the sweep. You hope you hope that other series goes to seven. You know, Chris Paul can rest that shoulder a little bit more. If any other players got any ailments, they can rest that up. And, you know, you hope the Clippers kind of win out of the series because you can, you know, have that home court advantage. But, and then show the picture of James Jones. How, he's done a very good job from, from player to executive role in a short amount of time. So, you know, shout out to James Jones for, you know, doing a great job for the Phoenix front office and kind of, you know, getting this team back to the playoff, um, back to the playoffs after missing it for a few years. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a hell of a job over there. And, you know, it's showing. I mean, they're, you know, they... He knew that he needed a leader on that team. And mm-hmm. he ain't got somebody that was a leader. <laughs> I mean, simple. You know, Devin Booker is a hell of a player, but she's going to get you a leader like a Chris Paul. Look at how Cameron Payne is, like, mm. pushing right now. And Chris so, Paul just hit the jumper over Jokic. He just popped it over, over Jokic. Yeah. And 
and Will Barton misses the three-pointer. So we got halftime for this game. I feel like one of those games, D-Log is like, Denver can do something good and one off on the offensive end, but then come back Phoenix and then with we'll his match it and just keep them above, keep them above. Yeah. How do you see the rest of that second half playing out? You think Phoenix going to just wrap uh, it up tonight? They, they, they have the, they have the team and the players to, to make a, make a push, but you are getting all you. You're getting all you can get from Denver, um, but Denver's no match. Um, I feel like Phoenix is gonna wrap this one up. You know, with the leadership of Chris Paul, the Devin Booker, these other guys, they'll close this one out. Um, this is gonna be something that, uh, like I said, Denver played good, but also we know who they're missing. I honestly believe, even if they had Jamal Murray, I don't think they really have a chance against Phoenix. I just think that Phoenix is just that team right now. I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders. Um, now, them winning this game, do them sitting a while hurt them? Possibly. But it does give them a chance to rest the shoulder a little bit on Chris Paul. Um, but they're deep, man. I mean, I don't think people understand how much they have on this team. You know, they have a lot of bigs, too. That's the big key. Um, you're not just leaning on eight just to eat all day. So they're going to sit back, you know, they'll close this game out, close this, close this series out, and just wait to see who wins between the Jazz and the Clippers. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Phoenix, they got all the confidence in the world. I think they'll finish out this series. They're ring players, they're hitting shots. And, you know, as long as those guys are hitting shots, along with Chris Paul, Devin Booker doing their thing. I think, you know, you can put this a, a bow for Phoenix. I think the only way Denver wins this game tonight is, so, is somebody besides Jokic can show up. I mean, I know Morris is playing pretty decently, but you need somebody else. That's, that somebody else should be a Michael Porter Jr. If we're going to be real about it. But, you know... We still kind of wait for him to kind of blossom and take over like a lot of us has envisioned since, you know, since his, you know, days during prep school and high school. So, if he can wake up and smell the coffee come second half, that would be great. Yeah. But if he don't... Yeah. If he don't step up, then just put a yeah, put a pull a ball on, put a ball in the series, and Phoenix will sweep him out. Well, it just it just for me, like I just feel like you know this game is interesting, but it's a closeout game at this point. Uh, you need your big time shooters like a Jamal Murray, like a Kyrie. You need them in these kind of games, you know, and you don't have them like you know your role players can only do so much. You know what I'm saying? So. How could you really be, in a sense, not necessarily mad, but you can't expect much from a man. So, to me, um, this game is gonna it's gonna go down to the wire, obviously, because this is the last game for them. But it's a wrap, man. I mean, Chris Chris Paul. There's no way that Chris Paul let this game, um, you know, go, and they give up uh, this series. Because, I mean, I guess if you want to close it in Phoenix, but are you literally going to lose what they are there? And then right, going to lose this game and then you know, give them an opportunity to go to fit Like, that's entirely too much. Give them a little bit of momentum, no way in hell. Yeah. And excellent point by Chris Paul. I think he's been in these situations too much to say, just smell blood in the water. Especially, and also Ty Lue is what, I mean, not Ty Lue, I'm sorry, Monty Williams, he's been in this situation before, you know, as a player and stuff like that, and been around multiple multiple coaching staffs. Smell blood in the water, take advantage of it, and close these boys out, and regroup, regroup for the next series. Yeah, because I believe their toughest, their toughest competition is going to be 
the toughest competition is going to be uh, between the Clippers and the Jazz regardless. This is going to be the toughest competition for them uh, during the playoffs. I definitely agree with that, and we'll put a bow on that. But do you do you but do you really think do you really think that the Nets can beat the Bucks without Kyrie? Oh. I mean, I know we talked about a lot of stuff, but that's just something that's my that's on my mind now because I mean, we talked about how Kevin Durant is this guy; and he's one of the greatest players ever, and all this other stuff, which is cool. But now we get to see him in the same thing that was going on with, with LeBron when LeBron was losing all these players. So do we see, do we literally see, I mean, you talk about the next series. I think Kyrie, back, back, he'll be back by then if they get there. But do we see him getting past the net, the Bucks without Kyrie? That's the million dollar question. Like I mentioned earlier, if they can get this other role player, those role player guys involved, you know, and plus you're going back, plus you're going back to home as well. So you're going back home as well. If those guys get confidence themselves. Maybe, just maybe. But I also say this: if you're uh, for Kyrie Irving, hey man, you you got to suck it up and play. I mean, you got to suck it up, man. Unless they're getting James Harden back next game, you, you got you got to tough it out. And, you know, and I just seen the notification. He said the x-rays are clean, so it's probably just a sprain. But, I mean, rest it up. See how you come out Tuesday and see how you feel. But I, mean, I understand if you hurt, you hurt. But still, you, you're, y'all too good in position right now to let up right now. Well, for me, you know, we were talking about Donovan Mitchell being hurt, right? Yep. This is a totally different situation. You know, Donovan Mitchell get hurt. Well, Donovan Mitchell doesn't play. And worst case scenario is the Clippers are, they tie the series up, right? That's different than if Kyrie doesn't play. If Kyrie doesn't play, they're down by one with one game left to win in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So it's you might have to toughen this one out, and you're at home this game. So this game is probably very, very crucial. Well, not probably; it is very crucial. So uh, to me, um, again, you know, you have the opportunity to play this game and this next game. I ain't gonna lie though, but like that roll, that <laughs> that ankle roll, that sprain is bad though. It looks bad. Like him landing on it that bad. That's literally something that can stick with you for months, hell, even years, if you don't really take care of it. And that's just you know doing the normal things you do in life, not being a professional basketball player. But you know, at this point, you know we have to see that toughness. Because we know what, what KD uh, carries and how he acts sometimes when things don't go his way. You know, this could be the breaking point where we see uh, these so-called best friends, these Batman and Robin guys, and KD and, and Kyrie um, kind of have some kind of feud or whatever happens because Kyrie couldn't finish the series. You know you know how social media do and, and, and news reporters, they could turn a, an answer of a question to something like, you're taking a shot at somebody. So, uh, for me, he has to play this game. Because if you don't, it opens a can of worms that you don't want to open. Or it can possibly open a can of worms that you don't want to open. So, uh, again, I mean, you ask me, I think that he should 
you know, he should go out there and give his all and see what he can do. Um, but if he don't play, I don't. I just don't. I, listen, if the Nets win this series and Kyrie doesn't play, like I said, Boonholes need to be the very next day. He need to be gone. <laughs> don't don't even listen. Don't don't go back to the office. Don't go back to the hell that night. He need to be gone. Don't go back to your don't go back to your office trying to think about everything. Don't go to the front office trying to explain. Just pack your bags and get up out of there. Because you got an MVP candidate or two time MVP. You got Chris Middleton who's an all star. Got Drew Holiday who can heat up at any point. This is your opportunity. Now we're gonna see Drew Holiday take over this series. That's what I'm expecting. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how things go out at that point. Uh, Terry and Bob in the chat, you know, before we head out. Now that you mentioned, you know, he's the album monitor. Um, high school girls uh, won a sectional championship on Wednesday. This is out in California. Not bad for a team that made his first playoff appearance since 2011. So congrats uh, to your album monitor, Terry. And was and pray and hope they keep this uh, success going because it's hard to get back to the playoffs and stuff, and it's hard, especially in these high school races. Which I what what I see in my own eyes, you know, these schools make the playoffs, you know, for a couple of years, and then they tr- go back and triple that triple and triple back down. So. If they can keep that success up, hey, great for things for them for the future and for the program, but they can't be just happy for like making one appearance and stuff. But D Lock, before we head out, I want I we didn't have a chance to talk about this last week because so much going on. What do you think about Monty Sexky retiring for college basketball and well basketball for good after next season? That's a big blow. Um, that's one of the better coaches that we've ever seen in college basketball. Hell, basketball itself. Um, for him to be done next year is going to be something that is something we're going to have to get used to. He's done so much. Uh, you know, and for him to be done, like done, done, you know, at Duke, that's wild. Now, we are talking about Duke. So Duke, Duke is going to you know, respond with a better coach. Well, not a better coach, but another coach that fits. It's, it's, it's just mind-blowing the fact that they're, you know, losing one of the greatest coaches of all times. And it's kind of weird the fact that it's happening after having a bad season. <laughs> so for him, but that's gonna hurt, man. That's not, you know, that's like losing Nick Saban in college football. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna feel different. It, it's gonna feel different, like. It's like one of those things you kind of expected, expect in college basketball that you expect to see Moxie Sexy on that sideline. Or like a Warrior Williams who retired, you know, here uh, uh, a couple months ago. You know, Jim Jim Behan, he's still coaching, but, you know, we don't know how long he's going to, he got. After that, you know, you don't got those household names anymore. I mean, you probably throw in Bill Self. But after that, you know, you really, you really got nobody out there right now. I mean, you really don't. I like, kind of looking back at it, it's like, dang, you really got no, those big names. Coach, uh, coaches that are big names now. Y'all getting older and retiring. She says she's going to be 75 here soon. 
Don't even look at either. No. So I was like, mm-hmm. you know, here in the state of Alabama, you got Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl. Nate, I mean, uh, Nate Oates is, you know, he's slowly making his name in the national spotlight. Bruce Pearl, his name has been up there in the national spotlight, but, you know, ever since he got that trouble in Tennessee, that luster kind of went away. Oh, man, you know, you got Mark Few in Gonzaga, you got Bryce Jr. in Baylor. Oh man, it's gonna it's gonna sting. It's gonna suck <laughs> for the college basketball world. It, it really is. Yeah, I mean that's a big name. I mean, you're looking at somebody that's had a prize program, and now he's gone. So, uh, but I mean, you live long enough, you start to see these things. You know what I mean? Like. You know, talking to parents and grandparents that are a lot older, they tell you they've seen a lot of stuff happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's shocking, but, you know, we get to see, you know, what what happens, what transpires after that. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, at some point, we're going to see Nick, even though Nick Saban, he just got the extension, right? Yep. <laughs> at some point, we're going to see him retire. Not anytime soon. <laughs> no. Nah. We're we're gonna see him retire hell. I know this is all topic, but the fact that college basketball I and mean, the college football is gonna have what, a twelve a twelve team playoffs? I mean, I think they're about to confirm that or make that official. You might want to go ahead and add call it the Alabama uh Alabama or call it the SEC uh playoffs because they're gonna have like seven teams in every year. And as long as Bama keeps winning, you know, Saban is not going anywhere. But at some point, he's going to retire. So, um, the fact that Coach K chose this time, uh, which he did in the, in the right way. You know, to be honest, I'd rather hear him say, hey, I have one more year left, you know, then for next year to end and then he announces it. You know, now we kind of appreciate his last season. So, uh very interesting to see what happens between uh, for Duke uh, and you know now because you got to think about the fact that they're always I mean they're literally always going to have rivalry with uh, North Carolina so uh, to me it's going to be something that you know people need to watch out for because you know that their coach didn't uh UNC, you know, their coach retired as well. Yep, Roy Williams, yep. Roy Williams did, so now and we talked about that what, maybe three or four months ago. Mm-hmm. So now the biggest rival team one of the bigger rivals that everybody watches, both their coaches are done. And now what's next in a sense for those two. You know, so it's gonna they're reinstalling that rivalry, you know, so um, hell, if I had a, a kid that played basketball, I still would send them, send them to either Duke or North Carolina. <laughs> so, um, or they'd be my top five. But, yeah, man, that's scary. It's about the right time. You know, you got to pick the right time and let it be known. I remember when Bobby Bowden retired, you know. So, uh, yep. These are the things that we experienced, man. Um, Going to see, you know, how Duke responds to this. Yeah, you know, I also forgot these other names, you know, Tom, I mean, not Tom Green, uh, Tom Enzo and John Kyle Perry. So you still got them in the mix as well. You know, for me, for Chesky, before we close here, you know, at one point, Duke was like one of the more hated, Duke basketball was more and more hated sports teams out there in the country, regardless of, Collegiate or pros, they're the ones year in, year out, hated programs out there. You know, and I think 
some of that was contributed by the me- media. You know, them sucking up, and especially Dick Vitale and, and others, did, really didn't help the cause. But I think, you know, over time, as you get older and stuff like that, you kind of brush that stuff to the side. You know, we talk, and then you, you, know, you look at the basketball scope, and it's like, okay. He he got some he did get some ballers to come through that program. As much as as hard to get, get into Duke and what you know what, what people perceive him to be, you he got some ballers to come through that program. Grant Hill, Christian Leitner, Trajan Landon, Jay Williams, and then you know you, you're going to look the past decade. Switching up to his recruiting style. Go for the one and dones. You know, Robbie Parker. Julio Okafor. Brandon Ingram. You know, Luke Kennard. And others. Zion. Zion, yeah. Uh, what's his name from New York? R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett, yep. Cam Reddish. Mm-hmm. That kind of, like, you kind of open up to, like, okay. Duke got some some players here, and then also they got some players that you you hate, you know, like a Greg Paulus, or uh, what's that fool's name? They that was that uh, uh, Marquette coaching, Wojciechowski. Yeah, couldn't stand him, and I I couldn't stand Shane Battier either. You know, I, I couldn't stand him either. Yeah, Maddie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's only known for a couple of things. You know, he knocked down a couple of threes and gave him a couple of steals, and he good for the, you know, good for the game. But that was about it. But, yeah. But I think, you know, things that kind of, you know, help the pro- program in light. Him being the uh, U.S. team's national men's coach, when they kind of you know trying to refocus and redo the whole that program, and taking that team taking that team to Beijing or China, really kind of you know put that little Duke hate away. I was like, okay, he's coaching Kobe, LeBron, Melo, Wade, Dwight. You know, who else he on that, that squad? You know, others. Did the same thing back in, you know, 2012, too. And which kind of translate, you know, I just mentioned about the one done players. Really kind of transfer, transformed that style into their recruiting, too. So, hey, I coach these guys. You know, I got a lot of guys in the league. Come here one year. I'll get you into the league. So, it, it, like I said, it's going to sting. It's going to sting for when he walks away. And, you know, and it'll be real interesting to see how John Shire, you know, comes to the role and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, out of all the Duke assistants, that probably were probably went up for the job. It's gonna be really interesting to see how Shire works in that role. I know he's a good recruiter. So we'll see. It's like a it's like a wait and see thing how he kind of carries that torch. You know, for the next you know, you no know, next uh, decade and for the Duke program. But, ladies and gentlemen, this has been our show tonight. Thank you for tuning in with us. Um, we will be back next week talking more playoff action and possibly talking about how some series has wrapped up in the NBA world. College basketball is in a dead period right now, so it's not too much news coming out from there. 
The WBA, NBA is off and running. Candace Parker's back in the fold. You know, I've missed this a few, couple games through injury. I seen that over there backing down somebody, uh, backing some, backing down somebody like a whole foot small, whole foot smaller than her. So yeah. unfair. So it's good to see her back in the fold. So hopefully she can stay healthy for the Chicago Sky. But D Lock, how can people find you on social media? You guys can find me at Black Dash Eight One Three, Black Dash Black the word Dash Eight One Three, um, Instagram and Twitter. Let them know about where they can find you in know, other podcasts, man. Uh, you can follow me as Twitter at Spawn Forty Two Eighty Eight. That is Spawn Forty Two Eighty Eight. Also, please do follow the show on Twitter at Fastbreak at, at Fastbreak at I E S R. That's Fastbreak I E S R. Also, please do I E follow the Mothership I E Sports Radio on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at I E Sports Radio. Please do follow us there through the social media networks. Also, please go to I E Sports Radio dot com where you get to playback for our show. But from all over the shows in the network, from volleyball to football, come Monday, the founder, the leader, Larry B, will be back with the defining moment. So please check him out. He's back in the fold, ladies and gentlemen. So please check him out tomorrow afternoon. Also, I do a podcast on the side, The Crooks Process. You can find that. On Instagram and Facebook, please follow me there and then take you to the link to the website and you get your notifications there. My last episode, I talk, kind of talked about Julio coming to the Titans, but you know, it did happen. So, I know you had me. So, yeah, I, I, I did talk about it since, like, you know, they are going to get him, but and it did happen. I guess I, guess I got to do a follow up on that D Law because, you know, a lot of. A lot of a lot of folks are hating. You know, Terry brought up about Colin Coward. He was hating. Keyshawn was hating. Uh-huh. I feel like I feel like I missed somebody else who was hating. Like I said, nobody can load the box against against their team. We got to a hey, bro. We got to do. We, I ain't gonna lie. We got we got to we got to do a uh, a football season podcast. <laughs> we'll talk about that off air, but yeah. Nobody can load a box against the Titans this year coming up. Because if you do. Oh, you're cooked. If you do. <laughs> high grease. You're done, done. So, yeah. Please check us out on all social media platforms. Like I said, check out the website, iSportsRadio.com. A lot of things going on. You know, new shows popping up. So, please check us out on the website. But till then, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, catch us next week and we'll talk to y'all soon. We're out. Out of there.